Good morning, children. Part second of A Gift of Chappals. Mridu crept up to the window. She silently went to the window to see what was going on inside. Lal, uh, she saw that Lali was sitting a little distance away, awkwardly, strangely, holding her violin and bow strung. Bow string. Her elbows jutting out, uh, they were spreading out, and her eyes glazed with concentration. She was uh, uh, looking too much concentrated. In front of her, with most of his back to the window, she was, toward, uh, she was backing towards the window, was the bony figure, sorry. The music teacher was uh, having his back towards the window, was a bony figure. Bony figure means uh, only bones were vi uh, visible in his body, he, as he didn't have much muscles figure of the music master. He had a mostly bald head. The head of the music master was bald with a fringe of oil black hair. Black hair, uh, a, a line of black hair was around his ears only and old fashioned tuft and uh, the old pattern of uh, combing that way. A gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck. The leathery neck of music master was having a gold chain and it was gleaming, means shiny. And a diamond ring, he was also wearing a diamond ring that glitter that signed on his hand as it glided up and down. When his hand uh, went up and down, the diamond ring was shiny. A large foot stuck out from the beneath his old uh, gold bordered vesti is. A vesti means dhoti. His dhoti has gold bordered, uh, gold border, gold colored border out of which uh, the foot of the music master was coming out and he was beating time on the floor with a scrawny big toe. Uh, his uh, toe was very big and uh, he was on uh, time and again he was beating on the floor. He played a few notes, he played uh, some songs. Lali stumbled behind, she, Lali was also trying to sing those songs behind her violin which looked quite helpless. The singing of Lali was quite helpless and unhappy. Means uh, it was not so much a gay program or gay presentation, happy presentation. So it was like, uh, looking unhappy and quite helpless. This is the picture of uh, how they were sitting there. And unhappy in her hands. What a difference. A lot of difference was there. The music masters not seem to float up. Means they were uh, swimming and settle perfectly into the invisible tracks of the melody. The songs, uh, the music which was going on, that was invisible track, tracks, uh, they, they were not uh, able to find out, but the playing of the violin was perfectly settled in that music. It was like the wheels of a train, thus singing or the playing of the violin was just like a, a train fitted into the rails and whizzing, the whizzing is the sound, shush, shush, uh, chuk chuk, you know, uh, the, the sound of the train. Along as Ravi said, Ravi earlier has explained this. Mradu stared, means he looked at the huge, beringed hand moving effortly, effortlessly up the violin stem, making lovely music. The, this is the description of the music master, and uh, Mradu looked at them, the hand which were moving effortlessly, without making much effort, it was moving up and down, so she saw them. So, squat, there was Lali derailing again. After music master, Lali, uh, Lali started playing the violin. Amma came a wail from the gate. Amma, oh, suddenly a sound comes from the gate. Ravi, send that beggar away. This beggar is again on the gate, send him away, cried his mother. Ravi's mother cried from the back veranda. Veranda, baramda, from the back side, where she was chatting. As, uh, Ravi's mother was sitting there and she was chatting with Pati, sorry, Tapi. He has been coming here every day for the past week. Last, uh, see, uh, this beggar is coming from the last week continuously every day, and it's time he found another house to beg from. Pati explained to Tapi. Ta Pati explained to Tapi that uh, now uh, this beggar should go to another house. Uh, we are not going to give him anything. Mridu and Meena followed Ravi. When Ravi went out, uh, Mridu and Meena also went with her, uh, him. The beggar was already in the garden. Uh, when they reached there, they saw that the beggar was already inside the garden, making himself quite at home. She was, he was very too, feeling too much comfortable, uh, like just like a home. He had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree 
and was leaning against its trunk, apparently prepared to take a little snooze. Uh, clearly, it was clear that he was trying to take a short sleep there, short rest there, while he waited for the uh, arms to appear. And he was just waited, uh, waiting that uh, some something should come from the house uh, in form of arms. Then uh, suddenly he uh, hears a sound, go away, said Ravi sternly. My party says it's time you found another house to beg from. Now, my party says that you should go to another house to beg from. Uh, you should go away from here. The beggar opened his eyes. He was surprised at this uh, sound or answer. Very wide and gazed. He looked at each, other, each of the children one by one. He looked at the children one by one. The ladies uh, of this house, he said. He uh, was saying that the ladies of this house, at last, while speaking in this way, in a voice, his voice was checked with feeling, are very kind souls. They are very kind hearted. I have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week. Since the last whole week, I have uh, kept my body and soul together. I was too much impressed by their kindness, their generosity. I cannot believe, uh, it's uh, unbelievable that uh, they would turn me away. He raised his voice, then again he tries to cry out, Amma, oh Amma. Amma O said his way. His cry was sad, might be, but it's it, it certainly wasn't feeble. It was not weak. It began in a deep, strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly, his dried up belly. His stomach was uh, too much dried or uh, it was not uh, coming out. So the sound was coming from deep inside the belly and came booming out of his uh, in a flourish or in a louder voice it was coming out. With its few remaining teeth stained, uh, only a few teeth were uh, in his mouth and even they were stained, they were uh, painted with brown, painted brown with beetle chewing. He was used to chew beetle, so it, they, the color of the teeth was brown. Ravi. Tell him there is nothing left in the kitchen, called Rukumani. Then again a sound comes from inside that uh, Ravi, uh, tell this beggar that nothing is there in the kitchen, so we can't give you anything. And he's not to come again, tell him that. And uh, she sounded fed up. She was fed up with uh, this beggar and she uh, told Ravi that uh, tell this beggar not to come again to this house. Ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar because it was also uh, audible to the beggar, what his mother said had been easy for them all to hear. All who were present at the gate were able to listen this, what was coming from inside. There under the name tree, the beggar sat up and shied. He sat, uh, sat down there and took a deep breath. I'll go, I'll go, he said weirdly. He was tired now and uh, he was hopeless now actually. And he told uh, that I'll go. Only let me have a rest here under this tree. I just want to rest here, so let me rest. The sun is so hot, the tar has melted on the road. The material which, uh, with which the road is built is uh, melted. So I can't go right now. My feet are already blistered. Uh, they are burnt with the heat of the road. He stretched out his feet to show large, pink, peeling blisters on the soles of his bare feet. Then he showed the children. He took out his feet and showed them that uh, his, uh, the pink uh, and peeling blisters on the soles on the lower part of his bare feet. I suppose he doesn't, he, he doesn't have the money to buy chapels. Mridu whispered to Meena and Ravi. Then after uh, seeing the blisters on his feet, the, sorry, Mridu uh, whispered, uh, she talked in a, a lower voice to Meena and Ravi. I suppose, I think that this person doesn't have enough money to purchase chappals. Have you got an old pair in the house somewhere? She asked if uh, some old pair is lying of, uh, some old pair of chappals is lying in the house, we can give to this beggar. I don't know, said Ravi. Ravi replied that he don't know. Mine are too small to fit his feet or I have given them to him. My slippers are too small, but if they were, it, it wouldn't have been so, I would have given to him my slippers. And his feet were larger than Mridu's and Meena's. So, our slippers can't fit. 
The beggar was shaking out its upper cloth and tightening its dhoti. He was trying to move away. He raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road. He uh, raised his eyes and looked at the road and uh, they were gleaming in the afternoon heat. As we see that some uh, miras looks in the daytime when the sun is so cold. He needs something on his feet, Meena said, her big eyes feeling it's not fair. He needs something on his feet. He should wear something on his feet, Meena said. Her big eyes feeling, uh, her big eyes are feeling, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not good that he should go in such a way. Shh, said Rami, I'm thinking about it, blubbering. It's not fair, it's not fair, isn't it going to help? In two minutes, he will be frying his feet on that road. If he goes the bare feet on the road, they will be frying, his feet will be frying there. What he needs is a pair of chappals. He just need a pair of chappals. So where do we get them? Now the question arises, where do we, should we get the chappals from? Come, let's search the house. He pushed Mridu and Meena into the house. Just he stepped into the veranda. Mridu's eyes fell on the old looking chappals. Just as he stepped out into the... When she went inside, veranda, Mridu's eyes fell on the old looking, the strange looking chappals uh, which were lying there. She had noticed when she arrived. When she entered the house, she noticed those slippers. So she looked at them. Ravi, she whispered to him, Whose are those? Whose slippers are those? Ravi turned and glanced at the shabby looking, uh, dirty looking or strange looking, you can say, but sturdy old slippers, but they were uh, looking strong. He be beamed and nodded. These are just the right size. They can fit the feet of the beggar, he said, picking them up. He picked the slippers up. Mridu and Meena followed him nervously back into the garden. They went back to that garden. Here, said Ravi to the beggar, dropping the slippers in front of the old. They dropped the slippers in front of the old man and told them that wear them. Wear these and don't come back. We, uh, wear these slippers and don't try to come back in this house. The beggar stared at the slippers, hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder. He put his towel on over his shoulder, pushed his feet into them and left, muttering a blessing. Muttering means whispering in a lower voice. He was giving blessings to the children. In a minute, he had vanished around the corner of the street. The music master came out of the house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them sitting quietly under the tree. At the same time, the music master came out of the house uh, room and uh, he was unappreciative, he was not appreciative, uh, he was not having any appreciative look towards the children who was sitting under a tree quietly, silently, playing marbles. They were playing marbles there. Then he searched for his chapels in the veranda where he had put them, where he put off his uh, slippers, he tried to find them out, but it was not vain. Sorry, it was not of, of no use. He was not finding his slippers there. Lali, he called after a few minutes. He called after a few min moments. She hurried uh, up to him. She came out. Lali, after hearing the sound or the call, she came out. Have you seen my ch chapels? Have you seen my chapels, my dear? I remember having kept them here. I know that I uh, put off my slippers here, but uh, they are not here. Have you seen them? Ravi, Mridu and Meena silently watched Lali and the music master search every corner of the veranda. Now the, the three children who have <laughs> donated the slippers to the beggar are watching all the activities of the music master and Lali sitting there. He scurried around, looked, looking over railing and crouching near the flower pots to look between them. He tried everywhere, the, bag, uh, sorry, the music master tried everywhere to search for his slippers. But now what was his comments? Brand new they were. My slippers were new, brand new. They were totally new. I went all the way to Mount Abu to buy them. And I went all the way, I Mount Road. I went to purchase these slippers from the Mount Road. He went on saying, they cost a whole month's fees. Do you know? Lali, do you know that uh, this is your total month's fees which cost to purchase these slippers? 
Soon, Lali went in to tell her mother. She went inside and told her mother that uh, music master slippers are missing. Rukumani appeared, looking harassed, with Pati following. She was appeared. She came there. She was also puzzled with Pati, and Pati was uh, Pati also came with her. Where could they be? It's really quite upsetting to think someone might have stolen them. Uh, it's strange that someone might uh, stole the slippers from there. So many vendors come to the door, worried Pati. At the same time, worried Pati tells that uh, many vendors come to our uh, gate or door. Anyone can take this. Rukmani caught sight of Ravi, Mridu, and Meena sitting under the tree. At the same time, Rukmani uh, saw that uh, these three children were uh, silently playing there. Have you children? She began. She started her uh, conversation. Have, and then seeing they were curiously quiet, went on more slowly. Seen anyone lurking around the veranda? Uh, she asked Ravi. But have you seen anybody who has come up to veranda? A sharp V-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows, and she was speaking this sentence. A sharp V-shaped line had formed on her eyebrows. Another straight, tighter one appeared in the place of her usually soft, pleasant mouth. Rukmani was angry. Told Mridu with a shiver. Now Mridu was uh, she was shivering. She wouldn't be uh, so upset if she knew about the poor beggar with sores on his feet. She tried to tell us. Now Rukmani uh, was uh, thinking that. Mritu can't uh, be positive with the beggar with, the, uh, with bare feet. So, taking a deep breath, she cried. Rukumani, there was a beggar here. Poor thing, he had such boils in his feet, on his feet. Means, uh, uh, due to the uh, hot sun, his uh, feet were burnt. So, what happened? Said Rukmani grimly, in a sad voice, turning to Ravi. You gave the music master's chapels to that old beggar who turns up here. Ravi, you have given those chapels to the beggar. Children these days, grown. In a, she said, Pati, Pati told that children, Aajkal ke bachche na? She said in such a way, Amma, didn't you tell me about Karna, Karn, who gave away everything he had, even his gold earrings, he was so kind and generous. Then uh, Ravi started saying that, Amma, Aapi ne to mujhe kaha ki karan ke baare mein, Dhanvir karan ke baare mein bataya ki usne apna sab kuch, even apne gold earring, sab kuch de diya, wo itna kind tha. Silly, murk, fool, snap, rukmani, karan did not give away other people's things, he only gave away his own. Now rukmani was telling um, uh, him, uh, Ravi, that, I didn't say that you should give another person's belongings to someone else. You should give your own. But my chapels wouldn't have fitted the beggar's feet. Ravi just pressed Leon. But now the innocent child told uh, Rukmani that my slippers are too small, so I couldn't give my to him. Amma, if they did, did fit, would you really not have minded? Agar wo hoti, Ravi said, Rukmani, very angry now, go inside this minute, don't argue with me, go inside. This was the comment of Rukmani. She hurried indoors and uh, brought out Gopu Mama's hardly worn new chappals. Then she went inside and uh, brought Gopu Mama's hardly worn, they were uh, hardly wear, worn because they were new ones. So the, uh, she brought the chappals, these should fit you sir. And she gave to the, these slippers to the music teacher. Please put these on. I am so sorry. My son has been very naughty. Uh, my son has given your slippers to someone else. The music master sighed later. Uh, the music master is now uh, too much happy as he has got new slippers instead of his old ones. He put them on, trying not to look too happy. Well, I suppose these will have. These will have. To do. Okay, come chalonga. 
दिस डे चिल्ड्रन हैव नो रिस्पेक्ट फॉर एल्डर्स वो टू डू क्या कर सकते हैं चिल्ड्रेन आर नॉट हैविंग रिस्पेक्ट फॉर द एल्डर्स ए हनुमान इनकार ने ये भगवान का हनुमान जी का अवतार हो गए इनकार ने कि मीन्स अवतार हो गए ओनली रामा कैन सेव सच एन ओटी पहलो राम ही बचा सकते हैं रुकमनी इज आइज फ्लैश हर आइज लाइट एंड सी डिडेंट सीम टू लाइक रवि बींग कॉल्ड ए मंकी दिस बिकॉज एट दिस कमेंट सी वॉज नॉट हैप्पी बिकॉज ही डिडेंट वॉन्ट दैट हर चिड हर सन शुड बी कॉल्ड ए मंकी इवन ए होली मंकी मंकी इज मंकी इवन इफ इट वॉट हैपन्स इफ इट इज होली सी स्टूड स्टिफ स्ट्रेट बाय द फ्रंट हो इट वॉज क्लियर सी वॉन्टेड हिम टू लिव क्विकली नाउ द टीचर्स म्यूजिक टीचर थॉट दैट सी इज एंग्री विद इज कमेंट एंड ई शुड लीव दैट हाउस वेन ई एट क्लेटर्ड ऑफ इन इज न्यू चप्पल्स द साउंड क्लेटर्ड ऑफ द साउंड ऑफ द स्लीपर्स वाइल वॉकिंग so so when he went out she said mridu come in and have some tiffin honestly how do you children think of such things how can you think of such things thank god your gopu mama doesn't wear his chappals to walk otherwise what what i should have given to this teacher as she walked towards the kitchen with mridu and meena she suddenly began to laugh and then she started laughing at this naughty action of the children but he is always in such a hurry to throw off his shoes and socks and get into his chappals as soon as he comes home when he uh, comes home he uh, throws away his socks and shoes and uh, gopu mama he is she is talking about gopu mama and uh, we are such a sleeper what's your mama going to say this evening when i tell him i gave his chappals to the music master now uh, that lady rukmini was surprised that what she will tell gopu mama about his sleeper that she has given to the music master so children this is chapter uh, gift of chappals part 2 thank you very much